you sure? Hi, I'm Katie Jimenez. And oh, you... I'm Andy Jimenez. Oh, for a minute I thought he forgot who he was. We are KMJ Ministries. Welcome to this video, Prepare for Tomorrow. We are trying to help uh, teach, heal, edify the body of Christ to their place in the kingdom of God. So like and share these videos. And we're going to get into today's lesson. We started a new series last week on the five, what is called the fivefold ministry gifts, or the five ministry gifts that Jesus gave to the church. Or office. Or office. Well, they're called ministry gifts, but they are offices. Mm -hmm. You know, like office of CEO, or CFO, or president, or of the board, or something. Um, these are offices that Jesus sets people into, and last week we discussed the Apostle. And we found out that yes, there are still Apostles, but maybe not as many as try to name themselves Apostles. <laughs> so, if you want to catch up, if you didn't see it, go back and uh, listen to Apostle. But this week, we get to focus on the Prophet. And this is another office that Jesus gave the church. Yes, we still need it. I know some people say, well, no, that went away. Well, um, we still need evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and Jesus gave them all as a package deal. So we need the other three. We need apostles and prophets. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what is an apo apostle. I'm already stuck in apostles. <laughs> what is a prophet? Who is not a prophet? And uh, what that means. Okay. okay. It says uh, the prophet, his primary task of a true prophet is to position himself before the presence of God. It's like a military. You've got a private that has to go to the captain and get orders and direction. It's as simple as that. We are the peons, and God is the general. And so uh, we go there to get our instruction, directions, and, and, uh, and, and, no, no. and, and what to, uh, to do. But uh, it is a, a, it's, it's like a, it's a metaphor, you know, that the, you know, God is our, uh, our boss, and we are his servants. So a prophet is a servant of God. So, uh, the prophet uh, usually goes to a, a quiet place to learn how to host his spiritual sails and catch the wind of the Holy Spirit. By sails, that's S-A-I-L-S, -S, not, not selling. Not selling something. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the thing is that the Holy Spirit is part of it. It's not a separate thing either. Uh, and that uh, uh, you start... Uh, they want to know, uh, and they teach you how to speak uh, prophetically correct when God has something to say to his people. When God says something for, for the prophet to speak, it better be what God said, not your opinion. That, uh, that's a, one of the main things that a lot of people uh, might uh, misinterpret. Yes. So, go on. You want to go I, on? Uh, yeah, go ahead and okay. do a little more on that. Uh, well, the word prophet uh, is a Greek word, and it's, uh, it's, and it's pronounced uh, prophetis, which is a compound of words. But I'm not going to go into uh, that in that, but it, it means uh, to say or to speak or, or speaking or saying a gift. In other words, a prophet has to talk. And talk the, uh, what God said for him to talk. It has to be the same. No misinterpretation, uh, no in interpretation or any your opinion. You don't add anything. You just say what God told you to say, period. And then run away. <laughs> no. See another one? Well, I thought you had them all. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. I go. I was looking over here too. Yeah. Okay, and also, uh, and you go also go uh, before the Lord. He is both listening to the Lord and speaking <coughs> before Him. So He speaks before God, 
to seek clarification. In other words, that when let, let me say that I am uh, little God, little God. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, the prophet, and I say, okay, this is what you're gonna have to say. That's uh, not little God. If you're pretending you're God, I say, G, little G. Yeah, that's a pretending. <laughs> okay, I'm your boss. Okay, <laughs> and you're my peon. <laughs> And so uh, I say, I want you to tell the staff that they have to leave at 10 o'clock to go to the conference at Kenneth Copeland. And you got to, uh, the bus will be there at, uh, at 9.30, but they leave at 10. And if you're not there at 10, you're, you're not going. Tell the staff that. Okay. Okay? And tell them no excuses. If they say, well, I, I got to go feed the dog or feed the cat or, or, or you know, or get a new dress or whatever, you know, there's no exception. If you're not there at 10, you're not going to be there. Got it? Got it. Repeat. We are going to the <laughs> Kenneth Copeland Conference. All staff members are required to go. Bus will come at 930, but you have till 10 to get on board. It is leaving at 10. If you're not there, you don't go, and we will not accept excuses. And you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. You see? That's, Yay! that's the clarification that uh, uh, God does with uh, the prophets. Uh, he wants to make sure that they know what He wants you to tell people because it is critical. Because it's the uh, when God speaks, He speaks something important. It's mm -hmm. either going to happen or, or, or something that's uh, about uh, whatever the... the uh, or clarification, direction for your life, or, uh, or, the, or the way a or body the is to go. Or the condition of, the, of your church mm -hmm. or, or, the, or your spiritual life uh, of a group. So it, it is important. Also, that the prophet's role... It, uh, after that, is to go public. He tells it to the people in public. So, uh, what uh, I told her to say, you go tell Alistair. <laughs> That's our dog. <laughs> and, and Is that it, really public? <laughs> That's public. He doesn't know it. <laughs> So you tell him uh, okay, you know, yes. what the uh, uh, God told you to tell you publicly. And so from there, uh, he, the, the deliverer uh, gives what the Word of God uh, wants to say to, uh, to them. Remember, it's, you don't put any interpretation or add or subtract to his words. You gotta repeated uh, what God said. In other words, mima, mimic. 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 And uh, also, finally, uh, you sometimes have to uh, speak of, of things that are going to come in the future. One thing that people uh, have a hard time is that they'll ask, when? Even the disciples said, when? But the uh, uh, Jesus told them certain things have to happen. Before. But he never gave a date. No date. And, and so when you receive a, a prophecy that is for the future of, okay, the country or the world or... Or a uh, church. Yeah, a church, you know, whatever. Uh, that it does, uh, God will not tell you when. Well, let's clarify most of the time he won't. There, I have heard prophecies where there's a a general date, but I haven't usually heard specific. like a specific date. Yeah, not yeah. A specific. And sometimes uh, 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 the Bible has some prophecies that how long they took? Thousands of years. <laughs> it came to pass. Seven hundred, five hundred. There's a couple that haven't come to pass yet. Yeah, and so. Uh, if when you hear somebody prophesying something for the, that is cut, uh, for the future, don't be uh, worried about when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. 
just accept it and say, oh, it's, oh, oh, God is going, uh, has warned us or is telling us what's going to happen, so you won't be afraid, or, or, or that it could be a blessing, you know, yeah. that uh, you're going to uh, marry uh, or buy uh, this 2,000 acre, uh, acre to build a church. And you're there saying, I don't even have a dollar. I don't have a dollar. <laughs> but he said, you will have a church there. And that's all he will say. But now, at then that you point, mix faith yes, the uh, faith comes in a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, so what we're, we're saying is we're reading this, the basis out of Ephesians 4. Um, actually, in verse 8, it talks about Christ. It says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. And then in verse 11, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, all of these ministry gifts we're talking about, these offices, why? To equip his people for works of service. So the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and then the knowledge of Son of God, of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We have to understand that Jesus himself represented all five of the ministry gifts. He was an apostle. He was a prophet. I shouldn't say he was. He is. He is an evangelist. He is a pastor. He is a teacher. So if you're going to bring the fullness of Christ to the body, you must have all five of these offices working. Now, I thought it's interesting, some people, oh, well, you know, Old Testament prophets. Yes, Old Testament prophets. And, of course, we know the major ones. We've got Moses, David was a prophet. You've got Elijah and Elisha. And then there's Ezekiel and Isaiah and Daniel and all those 12 people. Most of us can't remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also interesting um, that when we, we're talking, we keep saying he but God used women as prophets. Also, it's just easier to talk about one gender at a time. Deborah, of course, was a prophet in Judges. Um, later in the Bible, it mentions Huldah. She was a prophet. And also interesting, in the book of Luke, in chapter 2, although this person was an Old Testament, under the Old Covenant type of prophet, uh, when Jesus was taken to the temple by Mary and Joseph um, to be dedicated to God, this is Luke uh, 2.36, says there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel. So there are also women prophets. You can say prophetess if you want, but there are women who are prophets. So when we talk about he, it's just ease of referring. Remember that Jesus says... He doesn't uh, uh, distinguish uh, or discriminate either male mm -hmm. or female. Yeah. That's his children. He only sees his children. And really, in biblical times, it was more of a male-oriented, as head of household, head of everything, society. So they had fewer female prophets. They didn't have quite the understanding of this no more Jew or Gentile, male or female, in the kingdom like we, we do now. So that's why we will see more female prophets now. Uh, but we want to go into a little bit, let's see, did I get this? Oh, here, some of the prophets in the New Testament in Acts 13. It starts right at the beginning of the chapter uh, with some. In Antioch, uh, the church at Antioch had prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, um, we've been brought up with Herod, uh, and Saul. And then uh, while they were worshiping uh, Saul, the Holy Spirit set apart Barnabas and Saul for a work, and they became apostles. So you kind of grow. Um, I also read one teacher, actually it was Kenneth Hagin, who was called as a prophet himself, and he said normally... You just don't become a Christian and you're off automatically, boom, yep, you're a prophet. I know I'm a prophet. Prophets have to have some maturity. 
and you normally start out in one of the other offices like pastor or teacher or both first. Or the basics. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to know the ABCs, we have another series. Um, but you have to learn the basics. You normally don't become a Christian one day and get called into one of these offices the next. You have to know that, I mean, God has to know that he can trust you. You have to grow up in this a bit. And Kenneth Hagin said, and most of the time I, I have to say I have seen that. You are either a pastor or teacher first because you are growing in your knowledge of the word of God. This is another thing. You can't be immature. Prophets must be totally based in the word of God because nothing God is going to give you to say will contradict his word. And you want to know you're hearing from God. So if you hear this word and you go, wait a minute. Something in there doesn't quite sound right. And you go to the Word and you pray. And, and people have been tested and heard false spirits. And they pass the test because God says, no, that wasn't me. This is what I say. So a prophet has to be mature. And it's set in an office. And what we wanted to also let you all know, if you go to 1 Corinthians, I was thinking I have put a piece of paper here, excuse me, chapter 12. A lot of people mix up the gift of prophecy and the office of a prophet. And they think because they had a word for somebody, or maybe they had a word for two people, God's called me to be a prophet. I, I hate to tell you this, but that's just not true. Um, if we read verse, I mean, uh, chapter 12, Verse 7, it says, To each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. This is every Christian. Any person who is a Christian should be full of the Holy Spirit. By the way, if you have been born again and you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, just ask the Father right now to fill you with His Spirit so that you can have a part of this. Now, you could still be a Christian, and in one sense, yes, the Holy Spirit is in you because you couldn't have been born again without the Holy Spirit. But with the baptism, you're just dunked, immersed. It flows. He flows out of you, and he strengthens you, and he gives you power. Go read the book of Acts, first and second chapters. Anyway, um, so to each is the manifestation of the Spirit is, of, is given for the common good, and so it lists seven gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to the body of Christ. Any person who is full of the Spirit can work in these. When was the last time you said, Lord, please use me in miraculous powers? No? <laughs> okay. Word of wisdom, knowledge, gifts of healing, gifts of faith. But one of those is prophecy. And then Paul says in um, chapter 14, same 1 Corinthians 14, follow the way of love. You must be based in love. I'll read 1 Corinthians 13. And eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. It's okay to want these. It's good. He says, go ahead. Desire them, and especially prophecy. Because in verse 3, it says, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging and comfort, or exhortation is another uh, translation. So if you are giving a word to someone in the gift of prophecy, you it's going to be something that will encourage them, that will strengthen, that will comfort them. It's never to uh, cut down or hurt never, anybody. Never. It's never. God will sometimes use the office of the prophet to correct, always in love, but to correct. But that's the office of the prophet. This is just to help people, to strengthen them, and to give them encouragement. So you could do several of these. You might have a word of wisdom. You might pray for somebody and a miracle happens. You might have a word of prophecy that doesn't make you a prophet. Um, I, in fact, I listened to uh, another lady who is a great prophet uh, in the United Kingdom. And she said, I can teach you how to excel in the gift of prophecy because it's one of the spiritual gifts that are for everybody in the body. 
She said, I can help you grow in that. She says, I cannot make you a prophet. Only God can call you and set you apart to be a prophet. So you have to know that God has called you. And usually that will be recognized by other um, ministry office people. Other pastors, teachers, prophets, evangelists, apostles will recognize that you have been called into that. So if you think God has called you into one of these offices, do not just immediately run around and say, oh, I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. You're getting into the title, and plus, people in the office have a lot more responsibility to God for things, and it, it's hard. And like Manny said, you have to be a person that really spends time with the Lord and hears what the Lord says. And another uh, thing that you need to be aware of is there are a lot of false prophets. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not speaking on behalf of God. It's the demonic uh, spirits that uh, use people to give false prophecies. And that as you, uh, look, if you are a true prophet, you will discern that that wasn't God. Every Christian needs, like I say, no matter what office you are or what gifts you have, you need to discern what that, that uh, spirit is in that person. Actually, discerning of spirits is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you're a Christian, you can have that. But the office of a prophet is someone who is mature, who has excelled in m most of these uh, spiritual gifts first. There's a level. You start at a level. You move up in leadership. You move up in excellence and in hearing the voice of the Lord. And it's going to be someone who has spent a lot of time with the Lord and um, has been tested and has been tried. You know, and, and lots of times, you know, uh, uh, there are, you know, people or pastors or anybody says that all oh, these these gifts uh, don't exist anymore. And my question, I will tell you, okay, if those don't exist, it, it, is your salvation existed? Did you really accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you think there is a heaven, a real heaven? But the Word of God, you got to stick with the Word of God, what it says. There is a heaven. There is salvation. But uh, no man, no human being can say, uh, uh, can say that uh, they erase anything in the Bible. Yeah. So Manny was talking about uh, prophets or prophecies that don't come to pass. If, you, if there is a person who does give you a specific word about your future or about what God has called you to do, if you are thinking, wow, that is like no way I, I ever thought anything about that. Again, just say, Lord, if this is you, then you reveal it to me. Even prophets are still human, so it is possible to get a little bit of their opinion mixed in or something they see mixed in, which is usually why prophets don't want to know anything about the people they're coming to, if they're coming to preach, or it's, it's very difficult. In fact, we were talking about, you know, husbands and wives. If you have a husband or a wife that's a prophet, do they prophesy over the other one? And it's not that they can't, but I think it's harder to prophesy to somebody in your own family because you have such a history. And it gets a little more detailed to sort you know, your emotions and your history from what God is telling you. I'm not saying it can't be done. You just have to be really careful. Yeah, especially if the mother-in-law is telling you something. <laughs> Okay, that may be a person's own <laughs> words and opinions. But we were thinking maybe you have like some questions about, well, we talked about false prophets. How do you know it's a false prophet? Well, anything a false prophet says will not line up with the Word of God. Now, I realize if God says, you're going to move to Chicago and take a job in the financial industry, that's not in the Bible, okay? But God will bless you. However, if in your spirit that you go, wait a minute, no, I don't want to move to Chicago. I don't know anything about finances at all. 
probably a false prophet. However, I would just, that one you'd have to kind of say, well, Lord, I mean, if you didn't want me to move to Chicago, okay, you're going to have to make that clear to me. In other words, go back to the Word, go back to the Lord, Come pray. Come you pray. need to get confirmation. And usually, again, when a prophet gives a general word or sometimes a personal word, they don't give a lot of personal words unless it's to another leader, um, but it's confirmation, most likely. So. And you just have to take your time and pray about it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't immediately say you throw it out uh, the window uh, what you heard. But pray, yes, yeah. pray. It should be. It should resonate mm -hmm. something. Because you, in you know, your spirit. You know, it seems like a, in a lot of uh, the history of uh, other uh, ministers, pastors throughout the world and uh, throughout the centuries, God put them in a different place. Uh, uh, they started one place, and God told them to go another place. Mm -hmm. And quite often, when when God sets people apart, as by the time they've matured enough. So he sets them apart as prophets. Again, they're speaking on a higher level, a higher plane, more to groups um, than they are in personal prophecies. A lot of personal prophecy, um, if you're just encouraging, that's just the gift of prophecy. Correction will come, but that's almost and extremely rarely would ever be done publicly. That would be private. If, if the Lord would tell you as a prophet to go to correct somebody. So, did you have some questions you thought of? Well, we, we wondered if you might have some, so we thought, ooh, what would they ask? Okay, uh, what uh, would happen if uh, uh, someone who uh, is, says a, is a prophet and says something really good, you know, something really that you think... Uh, 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 good, but then uh, your wife says you don't. It doesn't agree with you in your spirit. Very good question. When it comes to husbands and wives, you must be in agreement. Now I'll say, you know, say somebody told Manny something, and he came to me, and I'm going, oh no, I don't think so, not at all. What would we need to do as a couple? We would need to pray because if I was wrong, then God will change me. He's told me that several times. God, change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but God will show me that this was true. The wife, or it could be either way, the wife or the husband, that this was true and this is what you need to do. If this really was not of God, somebody did happen to miss it, then God will change <laughs> his mind and show him, no, this this really wasn't supposed to be for you all. It was supposed to be for somebody else. They just kind of... Sometimes it, it, it takes a, a little while. It, like I say, I, I res, sometimes I respond. I don't respond to, uh, to uh, Katie. Uh, if I say, some, I think we should do something. Yeah. And, uh, and I just don't say anything. She, she gets a... She wants an a immediate, immediate answer. Yeah. And maybe it'll be a, a day or two, I'll say, or a week, oh, a week or a year, I don't know. I say, okay, we'll do it, or, and not, or not. Uh, there are a few times I, I, I said that we couldn't go to a trip. I can't remember. Yeah. Honest. But, but quite often, but that's the same thing, by waiting. Mm -hmm. If he was right, God will show me. You know, he's really right on the timing on that. And this, that doesn't even have to do with prophecy in the sense that's whatever you are in your relationship for marriage. Well, it's, it's the other type of prophecy in the way that uh, yeah. it, it comes in because if God is uh, telling you this, uh, you're telling that to me, you know, yeah. or vice versa. I did want to say something real quickly here. Um, it wasn't necessarily prophecy, but while we're on the subject of spouses, Whenever there's a major change to happen in your lives, you must be in agreement. Even if it is God, if you're not in agreement, that will mess with your marriage. And I have seen this happen. Um, I saw a pastor who got a call to a church, and his friends were telling him, oh yeah, this is a great opportunity, you need to go. But... Really, it, it was not, and 
his wife told him, I do want to do this. I don't think we should go. I think we, we need to stay where we are. But because a couple of his friends, and he really wanted this opportunity, said to go, he uprooted his family, they moved, and it tore his marriage apart, tore his family apart after about three years. Um, you've just, you've got to be in unity. And if you think it's right, then you need to pray that your spouse, that God speaks to your spouse, because it's better to wait. It's not that you're being disobedient to God, but it's better to wait till you are in unity. And really in this case, because I, I happen to be a part of this, in a sense of the situation, <laughs> not us, but I mean, I know the situation, um, that pastor was not supposed to move. That pastor was supposed to stay where he was. Um, and I, I, I really didn't like seeing what happened to his family. So I'm just saying, you, as long as we're on that, you got to be in unity if you're married. And just pray for the God to show you together. And also, it's uh, very prevalent, uh, especially for uh, young people. Uh, they'll ask, or maybe uh, uh, they feel, should I marry this person? You know, they, they want somebody to tell them yes. Yeah. You know? it, and if uh, they say no, uh, they'll go to another. Uh, should I marry this person? person? And they go until somebody says yes. And, uh, and then yeah, God's the not, not going to tell you to marry someone who's not also a Bible believer. And I would just say in general, it's real dangerous for pastors Unless, they, unless God's telling them to tell you not to marry someone, you just you got to be real careful about that, telling yeah. people who to marry and not to marry. Um, but one thing we wanted to just bring up real quickly is, I think we've gone really long, but is just um, what about people who are into astrology mm -hmm. or palm reading, and they seem to know things about you that nobody, or they shouldn't know, nobody would know. There is... Uh, an enemy out there who has minions. There are demonic forces that are what we call familiar spirits. And they will follow you around and learn information about you. And so if you decide, well, I mean, this person's kind of a prophet, right? I mean, they tell you stuff. No. And, they'll t and you'll be convinced because, wow, they really know stuff about me. If they do not declare that Jesus is God who came in the flesh and he is Lord, well, number one, anybody like that should not be calling themselves an astrologer or a palm reader. Um, just stay away from them. That are There are evil spirits who will tell things. And witches. And witches, yes. They are out there. Mm -hmm. You want only to hear from people who declare Jesus is Lord that, and they don't do it for money. Now, it's one thing to give an offering to the ministry of the prophet. That's fine. But if somebody says, for $1,000, I'll, you know, I'll tell you what God is saying to you. Even if they declare Jesus is Lord, don't go to them, okay? I mean, just don't. So, um, I think, is there any, Lord, is there anything else we need to throw in here? Um, love. Everything is based in love. The prophet must be based in the word. They can't be based in seeking the miraculous, even though the miraculous quite often happens in their ministry. But they have to be based in the Word. And they have to be able to teach. And they have to be able to... Uh, that's what this uh, this lady prophet also said. They have to be able to replicate themselves. They're, they're so established, and they know that they can teach and help other people understand either are you working in the gift of prophecy, or are you called to be a prophet. Is that it? That's it. We covered it. Yay! So I hope you learned a little bit today. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. And we believe this is foundational. We're trying to teach a lot of foundational things that people don't always hear. And so uh, we're going to continue on with the rest of the five ministry gifts in the coming weeks. So like, share this video, please. Tell somebody about us. Subscribe. So you know we try to get them out every Monday once in a while. That doesn't happen, but we really try to do that. One thing I want to say, if uh, if you uh, know any people or friends that uh, are in this type of situation where we talked about, 
help them find a good church, a word church, mm -hmm. that teach the word. Uh, not every church or pastor teaches the word of God. Right out of the word and, and teaches the truth. Right. Yeah. Listen, you can ask us questions. You can write to us at info at uh, kmjministries.com, info. You can leave a comment. Uh, we do go in and read the comments. We, we'll see if we can answer you. You can uh, comment on our Facebook uh, page, which is KMJ Ministries. Um, I was trying to think. Our website, kmjministries.com. There's a place to email us and leave a comment there. Um, so if you have questions, please let us know. We will pray, see if we can answer, get something out of the Word, not our opinion. And we'd like to hear from you. So until next time, we want to say that uh, Jesus is coming soon. Bye. Are you prepared? Bye. <laughs>